The oft-quoted golden rule states to treat others the way you want to be treated, but if that were the case in Clash Royale, you'd lose all the time, and there is some gold that trumps that rule. That's right, a golden ticket trip to Clash Royale League World Finals. Hello, and welcome to Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. I'm Rich Slayton, joining me as always, my friend Andrew Guy, and rounding out the squad, that's two-time regional champion for Clash Royale League, Joshua AC Sharon, and world champion coach of Team Liquid, Eric EB7 Benamu. Andrew, we have golden tickets behind us, a couple more right in front of us. What's on deck for the show today? That's right, man. 2022 is well on its way. The legend Burter Chong is back for the Burter Chong Masters Challenge. It's going into the second part or the second phase of that right now. More information on that later as we just wrapped up the Snapdragon Pro Series Split 1 North America and Europe, Middle East, North Africa. More information on joining the next split later on today as well. I'll be sitting down with the winner of the latter of those two splits. And I broke my back while Josh's nose is repairing itself. My back has somehow broken itself. So I'm going to go sit down while Rich, please, can you tell us how the Snapdragon Pro Series went this last week? Well, Andrew, it was great, but also really, really stressful because this tournament was a single elimination bracket. And let's roll the tape because check out who was matched up in the first round of the bracket. Mohamed Light and Morton, two of the all-time greats. Probably the two biggest names in the bracket in the first round. And look at this. Mohamed Light running Pump and Mirror in a Lava Hound deck. Insanity. Bad matchup for Morton. But remember those arrows you just saw on the bottom left? They are important here in about 13 seconds. Mohamed Light coming down that left hand side heavy flying machine lava hound skelly drags morton holding on with a cannon cart and ewiz just trying to stay alive arrows would win this but arrows can't get back around enough morton wins this one by just 44 hp walk off victory against the pharaoh gg well played more from morton later next up another german faust with a good matchup against viper but look at what viper's playing hog Exe NATO. You know the Frenchman's played this deck thousands of times, got first place on ladder with it, and he started cycling rockets really early in this match, knowing that he was like a 30, 70, 40, 60 at best matchup, but that log, that rocket gets in. This is one of the best players who is the guy who made this deck famous, it made him famous, gets the big dub, more of the Frenchman later. On to Interage against Mario. Yeah, that's actually Michifu, but look at the lead right now for Michi on the top by a few hundred HP, and check out the Ram Rider. Inaraj can't believe it. Michifu can't believe it. That was an absolute theft by Inaraj. Get in tight here. Watch this Ram Rider just thread the needle in the last second here and get that connection with one and a half maybe left. That's a big win. Inaraj moving on and qualifying for the next phase of this event. Back more from Morton. Told you it was coming. Up against another Egyptian here in Cap Gun. And Capgun trying to EQ cycle. And again, Morton playing from behind. We see him do that so often. Graveyard takes the lead here in the final 20. And look at another Graveyard down. Capgun just stressed. Trying to stay in this one. Can he EQ cycle enough? No, he cannot. Morton putting the pressure on. Taking that lead. Capgun trying to come back. Can he do it? No way. He drops the phone. And take a look at this tower. That's right, 44 HP games back to back against Mohamed Light and Capgun. GG, well played, Morton. He qualified with that matchup. Here we go to the championship, though, the final. Viper against Inaraj. Inaraj threads the needle there with the wall breakers, but Viper returns the favor and kaboom! Takes the tower and the $9,000 grand prize for this first split of the Europe Middle East North Africa Grand Final. There you go on the left hand side, your Snapdragon Pro Series qualifiers Viper, Inaraj, Morton, and Rosen. There will be four more players joining them at the end of our split two. They'll go in and get in on that action as well. But for now, we do have one person on top of the hill that's viper played beautifully and right now we have him standing by with andrew guy for an interview thank you so much rich and i'm very excited to sit down or i guess i'm standing right now to talk to viper today the champion of the europe mena first split of the snapdragon pro series first of all viper how does it feel to win a tournament early on here in 2022 well it feels great since last year i i went out in the first round at the world so I'm happy to win it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm glad that you brought that up because I wanted well, to talk yeah. to you just a little bit about the World Finals and how you were eliminated in the first round. What was the biggest thing that you kind of learned walking away from World Finals? 
where I'm from, world finals, I, to be honest, I didn't prepare so much my matches, so it showed against <laughs> Ajme, he knew that I would play, and that was my biggest mistake, yeah. So this year I took an analyst, as in Javis, who helped me a lot. Now, so working with Jebez, uh, what do you yeah. think is the biggest thing that's kind of changed in your gameplay? Is it literally, is it just the deck selection or is he helping you in other facets of the game as well and picking your opponent's decks? Uh, what do you think has been the biggest thing about picking up this great analyst? Well, before I I had to do everything by myself, so it was pretty tiring. Now he helped me, he helped me to pick my decks, so I just had to focus on makeup day and win, I guess, that's all. Yeah, it takes a lot of weight off of your shoulders when you have someone yeah. else kind of doing that work while you're playing against your opponent. I do want to talk about, though, because we weren't sure if we were going to see it. You played Hog XE NATO against Faust in game two. You were yeah. already up one game, and on broadcast, I was talking a lot about how that was such a difficult matchup. Uh, so maybe this is a two-part question. First of all, what made you decide you wanted to play Hog, Hog XE NATO? And then how quickly did you recognize you had to play through a bad matchup? We'll go one, then two. Well, it, it was not my choice, <laughs> it was a Jebus choice. He okay. knew that uh, first used quite a lot of cards that controls my Hogexy deck, so he made the choice to play the Hogexy. So then, talking about playing through that matchup, we, we spoke to you just a little bit before we came on broadcast. Uh, how quickly did you recognize that that was a bad matchup and that you needed to just rocket cycle, and how did you start to do that in single elixir? <clears throat> Well, as soon as I saw that first had the cannon in his deck, I knew that I had to rocket cycle because cannon is such a good card against Hog, so I knew that I couldn't break through my my hunt. Okay, all right, yeah, it's it always blows my mind when you yeah. guys can recognize to start cycling rockets that early on. Um, so now you've got. Uh, a win in the split, but you don't have a golden ticket yet. If you were yeah. to win the golden ticket in just a few weeks, would you find yourself competing in other tournaments? If, if you won a golden ticket early on, what does it look like for you for the rest of the year before we get to World Finals? Well, obviously, I, st I still keep trying to compete in other competitions because it's a good practice and you always face really good opponents. So you, you have to play them because if you don't play them, You'll be behind other players. Uh, last question, man. Last question before I let you get out of here. And thank you so much for taking time today. World Finals 2022. Can we see you as the best Clash Royale player in the world? Is this the year for you, Viper, to make it happen? Well, I I can say that much right now because you have Mohamed Light, who is the GOAT. You, I can say that he's a GOAT, honestly. He's been really good for this year and last year, too. So it will be really difficult to surpass him, but I try. Yeah, man. Take care and congratulations. That is going to do it for Viper. And now we're going to toss it over to Joshua AC Sharon to see what's upcoming and ongoing in the Clash Royale competitive scene. Josh, take it away. Congratulations again to Viper. It is always amazing to see that man have success in tournaments and also with his own deck. Mad respect, my man. Mad respect. Look. Like always, with this section of the show, we have more golden tickets to talk about. We have the Masters Edition by Bernard Chong for this one. After a series of 48 in-game tournaments hosted by your favorite content creators, we were left with 288 players remaining. That is going to be your group two, or your stage two, excuse me. We have the Swiss brackets running through May 26th through the 29th. Stage three is going to be a group stage that is going to be June 2nd through the 5th. And then make sure to mark your calendars for the golden ticket final, June 10th and 11th. But that's not all. If you want to participate in more tournaments, we also have the Snapdragon Pro Series. Split number two, we have Europe and MENA. A golden ticket opportunity awaits as well as $60,000. June 3rd and June 5th for the qualifying rounds. And then on the other side, we have North America, $20,000 prize pool. June 1st is going to be your qualifying date. And then make sure to go to snapdragonproseries.com for more information. 
Also, make sure to mark your calendars for June 9th for the finals of the North American Snapdragon Pro Series. That's enough hosting for me. Rich, Andrew, please take this. <laughs> Great work, Josh. In fact, we have a new announcement. Joshua AC Sharon, the full-time host of the show. Andrew and I taking a, a long vacation, and we'll let him take care of all that business. Speaking of business, Andrew, what should everybody do every time at the end of these episodes? I'm nervous now, man. I don't I don't want to mess up. Uh, well, let me just do what I've been saying for five years, guys. Make sure you ring that bell. Turn on notifications so that when you're subscribed to the channel, every single time that we go live or put up a new episode of Three Crowns, which we do twice a month for you guys, you will be notified. All the rest of the information you can find on Twitter at esportsroyale.en, and you can follow esports.clashroyale.com for all that information in one beautiful place. That's it for today, folks. On behalf of everybody here at the show, Andrew Guy, Joshua AC, Sharon, Eric EB7 Benamu, he'll be back, don't you worry. I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you next time right here on Three Crowns.